If you're using a Mac or Windows, as many people will be, especially Windows, then you have a number of options for what C compiler to use. In terms of free compilers, there's still several options, uh, but many, many people may choose to use Visual Studio. So here I'm searching for Visual Studio 2019. I get this link here. I go here. And when I click on the drop down here, I can see there's three options. The community option is the free one that Microsoft makes available to you. So that's the one I've downloaded. So you click here, I download the installer, click on that, run it, which takes a long time. And eventually you get to this point. So after ins the installer worked and it downloaded several gigs worth of, of uh, information, I get to this point. So I see this screen, it wants me to sign in. I'm gonna say not now uh, because I don't wanna sign in for this stuff. Up here, I see development settings. I'm gonna choose C++. And this particular screen, you should only see the first time you install. So now when I start Visual Studio, takes a moment. It won't actually take a couple minutes. We get to this point. And I don't need this anymore. And so each time that I start Visual Studio, I actually come to this page. So I want to create a new project, at least the first time. Click on that. And for what we're doing, I'm going to choose the console app. All right, so choose that. Hit next. Give it a name if I want. Uh, my example. I can change where it goes. I typically put everything together, but it probably doesn't really matter for what you're doing. And I'm going to create. So it takes a moment to do this. And now I come up with this. Now, you probably don't really need this side. I can collapse it. But if I want to rename things, strictly speaking, C programs should have an extension of C, but this will work fine if I call it CPP for what I'm doing. But if you, for consistency, want to force the issue, I can click over here, choose to rename it, and do that here. All right. Now, what we're looking at here is a C++ compiler. There is a way to configure it to treat your code as C89, because I don't think uh, the C++ compiler here supports any standard of C completely except for the 1989 standard. This does support some of the 1999 standard features, but I don't think it supports all of those or all of any of the next two standards that we discussed previously. So I'm not going to show, because I don't remember off the top of my head, what all I had to do to change it to compile strictly a C89. You can do an online search for that, but typically I do that just so I don't have a compiler set up that accidentally lets me mix C and C++ uh, things, all right? So we have this right here where it's trying to help me out. I'm gonna gut all this. And now let's see what will happen. So I'm gonna say pound include, because I wanna print, so I need to include this library. Pound include standard io.h, int main void. Sorry, that should be in parentheses. Beginning curly bracket. I like to go ahead and put the closing curly bracket just so I don't accidentally forget. And let's create some variables. And a equals five, comma b equals 99, comma c. As I said in my introductory video, if I really had context, I would want to use meaningful names like count or cost or age or name or whatever. But here I'm just showing you how to add some numbers together. Then we'll come down a couple lines. C is equal to A plus B semicolon. Come down the next line. One, two, three, four. Print F. Close with semicolon. And what I'm going to do is I want to print A plus B equals C, but with their actual values. So since these are ints, I'm going to use percent D. So percent D plus percent D equals percent D, a new line, and then come back over to here and put A, since that will go into here. The percent Ds are placeholders, so this sees the first thing that's an int, 
And so it's going to put the value of A here. Then I want the value of B here and the value of C here. So A comma B comma C. If I hit Control S, I can save it. And now I could just build it if I wanted to. But I'm going to go straight to trying to run it. So I'm going to click on Start without debugging. In the future, if you wanted, you could just press Control F5 as the hotkey to get there. But click on this. It's going to attempt to compile it and then run it. And we can see 5 plus 99 equals 104. So it did work correctly. Press any key, I'm going to hit the space bar, and that stops it. And if we look at this output window that popped up, we can see that it was successful in building it. There was no errors. What would those look like? Because in my introductory video, I told you one of the things you might want to do is break things and see what happens. So let's say I came into here, and when I was typing all this, I wasn't really paying attention, and I accidentally put an X. Right? It's trying to help me by expanding. Now, if I'm looking close enough, I can see, oh, the little red line there is telling me it looks like something's wrong with the X. But maybe I don't pick up on it. So I go to debug again, start without debugging, try to compile it, and it says, oh, there's errors. Would you like to run the last one? No, I don't want to see you use the last one. I want to try to use this one. So I'm going to hit no. And now I come down to the build box. And I see it says here on line 6, in what I guess is column 15, it tells me there's some problem here. It thinks that I was missing a semicolon, so see it's not entirely accurate in terms of what it, it thinks the problem is. And then on the next line, all right, well of course, I mean next line down here, line 6, column 15, it's telling me, oh, well, what is X? You had this X in here, I don't even know what that is. Because if I put something else in there, like let's say C, C was actually defined. What would happen if I try to build that? Start without debugging. Well, now the error message is slightly different because C is a defined variable. It's just I don't have any, this isn't legal code. I can't see B space C. That doesn't work. So here's the error message. So then this will point me back to line six. I come up and say, oh, well, I made a mistake. Let me get rid of this. Put B back in there again. If I wanted to B times two, I'm gonna hit Control S to save it. Uh, start without debugging. Of course, now my print statement's not technically correct because I said five, uh, or I mean A plus B, and now I'm changing what I'm doing with B, so it's not technically correct, but I won't see if what I have is legal. Start without debugging, yes. So 99 times two uh, would be 198, plus five is 203. So it seems to be working. So back when I used to use Visual Studio more often, I found it a real hassle to create a new project each time. So basically I would take what I had here, save it, store it in another file, that way I'm saving it, and then I would gut this and start from scratch. And now I would type in my new code, pound include, standard IR, whatever. If you, if you do want to have separate projects, you can go up here, file, new, project, I'm going to choose console app again. So this is the page we saw before. Next, console app 4 because I had several consoles, so it's just trying to update it. Create. Uh, do I want to save the things I had before? Sure, save those just in case. And now here's my new console app. Get rid of that so I can see more. Once again, I'm going to take this, gut it, start over. And that's what I would do. So what we're looking at here for Visual Studio is what's called an integrated development environment or short, uh, the short version is IDE. It's a full-blown development program. So this side is the text editor or the programming editor. You can see here it shows me lots of the support files. It has a built-in what we call a debugger, which is a tool for letting me go through my code line by line if I wish to try to figure out why there's errors. Uh, you could work through this to play with that. Um, it's a project management tool. It supports all kinds of things, which are really overkill if you're just writing five or 10 line programs. But anyway, this is how you could use Visual Studio if you wanted to do your development. Visual Studio is also available for Macs. So if you have a Mac, you could do this. And I assume the installation is basically the same, although I've never tried it on a Mac. But anyway, that's what this looks like.